Hiya, and welcome back to Password. The game that teaches us that the Yeen boys are baby girl. This is the third attempt for part 15. This is the third attempt. We have been having nothing but technical issues so far. We're already 11 minutes in. We are already 11 minutes in the stream, and we haven't even started because of technical issues. So let's just hop right in. I am... Hang on. If, if this fails, I am going to just scream. I am going to scream. I'm going to scream, and I don't want to. There was a familiar floating sensation that I was very quickly getting used to, and I didn't like it. Almost before I could hear it, and for sure before I could see anything, I knew where I'd end up. Sitting on my bed felt off, but maybe because I was fairly certain that this was just a dream. After all, with everything going on, there's no way that I had it backwards. I made my way downstairs, wondering why I was thinking of home so much. I missed it, sure. More so with everything else going on, too. Dad? No response. A blessing in disguise, and I felt relieved if a little. Relieved if a little. Ah. Still, what relief was soon replaced with loneliness knowing that one person I wanted to be around that I could turn to for advice was long gone. Not only that, but I'd given myself the impression that it pushed everyone away in trying to cope with my problems, only to make more instead. Orlando seemed convinced he wasn't going to be happy, and just thinking that he was leaving caused my chest to throb painfully. Was he keeping it from me on purpose? When was he planning on telling me? Part of me felt sad and confused, the other felt hurt that he just decided to hide it from me. I looked out at the front yard, most of it a haze and a blur of color instead of what was actually there. The letterbox was the most distinct thing out there, having spent most days leaning on it, waiting for Dad to come home. Dad? I spoke to no one in particular, half expecting him to be around or to just show up, but things were quiet. But yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I don't know right now. Let me let me check something. I d honestly don't know if it's okay because I don't know. Let me check something. I'm I'm checking something right now and if my suspicions are correct then I'm I'm just giving up tonight. I'm just going to give up on tonight if my suspicions are correct. Because if if my suspicions are correct, which they currently are not, currently it is not correct. Okay, I spoke to no one in particular, half expecting him to be around or to just show up, but things were quiet. Looking around the living room again, I took stock of everything that held some sort of fond memory. The anchor sitting against the wall that Dad bought... Mom's diploma hanging proudly on the wall, a couple of painted rocks sitting on the bookcase that I'd put there for decoration. These were things that we'd put the there as a family, each with a story that made me smile. I also have suspicion, but now, thinking about with how Dad was gone, and Mom working so much, it was just lonely. Mom? Much like before, there was no reply. She wasn't around either, but that was something that wasn't too new. When Dad died, she'd lost a lot of her edge, coming home mostly to sleep only to disappear back at work. It's time to drink water. And there's an ad. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. I am not allowed to just disable ads. I am not allowed to disable them. I genuinely wish I was allowed to disable them, but I'm not allowed to. I will... Because then we'll lose access to a lot of the features that we have if I disable them. And I would not be allowed to re-enable them. I can't remember the last time we ate a meal together, e even living in the same house. But that's the void that Tyson filled. Maybe, or maybe I'd just forced him into that role. Maybe he didn't mind, or maybe he did. I never thought to ask. 
I found myself in my kitchen just as empty as the rest of the house. It was a cruel reminder of what was to come after this vacation. Everyone leaving shy of Dean or Tyson, maybe. For who knows how long. Maybe I should leave too, or ask if I can just follow just so I wasn't left behind. But in Orlando's case, that just wasn't an option now. I felt cold, deflated, and before I knew it, I was waking up. Ugh. It was early. Early enough that I'd only been down for a couple of hours. My mind was racing with everything that had happened. My stomach lurched when I remembered what I'd seen in the laboratory, and if I had anything left in my gut, I would have likely lost it there. I checked my phone and it was still charging, but even that had little com but even that held little comfort in me. Sitting up in bed, I whined, hanging my head. I was tired but not sleepy. Maybe I needed a warm glass of milk or a walk or something. The house was quiet. Hiya, hands in the pouch of my hoodie as I descended to the foyer. The tiles were cold and smooth on my feet, making me flinch the moment I touched them. But something else caught my attention instead. The sound of someone upset. Maybe upset was the wrong word for it, but it was coming from the room off to the side. I eased the door open. The moment I did, everything stopped. Ty? Hey. He wiped his face, pocketing his phone and looking at me from the sofa. I wandered closer and he shuffled over, making space for me to sit next to him. Hey, you alright? Yeah, I'm good. Can't sleep? I shook my head, slumping my shoulders. He carefully put an arm around my shoulders and I leaned back against it to rest my head. I don't feel good. Yeah, I hear you, pup. I miss dad, Ty, and then all the stuff going on, I just... Yeah, no shit, I know why you're upset and you worried the fuck out of all of us at dinner. I did? Ty nodded, looking me over quickly. Orlando was going to check in on you, but made Sal do it. Ended up breaking down and fretting that he'd said the wrong thing and started crying. Fucking annoying, if you ask me. Dean had to try to calm him down because Roswell and Haas weren't helping for shit. What did he say? Didn't. Just said he said a thing that upset you and felt bad for dumping it on you. I don't think he meant to. I might have pushed him into it. Well, whatever it was, I don't care. If he's going to make you mope more, then I'll just pick you up. Huh? He pulled away and reached into his pocket for his phone, swiping through something until settling on something and showed me the screen. Here. He handed the phone out to me and placed an arm back around my shoulders and cuddled in so we could watch together. It was a video and I was scared to hit play just from the thumbnail. It's a video of Dad. Ty nodded and reached over and hit play, while my shaking hands held the phone. Just a sec, honey. Dad was waving to Mom off screen with an ice cream cone in one hand with the camera in the other. It was the day we were at the beach, with the camera angled up just enough that Ty and I were in the background. What? What were we doing that day? Frisbee. Without fail, the me and the re recording stood up from digging something out of the sand and flashed it up towards Tyson, who looked about ready to run. I felt Ty rub my shoulder and arm as we continued to watch my dad talk about how we were at the beach with his two boys and lovely wife as if, as if this was some video journal. Ty? Why do you have this? I'd never heard dad refer to Tyson as a son either, so part of me was still reeling how casually he'd said it in the video. He said nothing, instead just staring at the recording as dad continued to ramble about stuff and the things that he had planned. The things that we ended up doing. Right up until the frisbee hit him in the back of the head from a stray throw by me. Ty? Sometimes... I just watch this. Remember that I had some sort of decent family for a bit, you know? Your dad helped me with a bunch of stuff. He sent me a copy of this when I was feeling insecure about my own stuff because... Well... He left the thought there, pulling his arm away again to sit in his lap. The video ended with my dad stunned from the frisbee hitting the back of his head, tongue half out of his mouth and ice cream in risk of falling to the ground. Because... why? He snuck a glance at me before closing his eyes, breathing in deep and turning to look at me properly. Because he wanted to make sure that neither of us ever forgot that we were loved. That he loved me, that he loved you, that I... He gulped, gaze wavering before he eased the phone from my hands. Look, I'm not going to go all gay on you, but you're my brother. 
Not like because of blood, but that's the closest thing I can put it down to. I'm also excited. When you're hurting, it hurts me. So, uh, just remember if shit goes down, I've got your back, alright? And, uh, you know, the other thing. That, what, I don't... He looked at me dead in the eye, pocketing the phone so he could place his hands freely on my shoulders. He stayed quiet, just holding me there. My heartbeat slowed down to a calm pace as we just stared at one another. The only sound were our breaths as quiet as they were. Ty? Do you love me too? His grip tightened ever so slightly. The next thing I knew, he'd pulled me into his chest, his heart beating heavily. Do you? He just rubbed the back of my head, and with his heart beating in my ear, I started to doze off. Ty? I didn't get an answer, but I blacked out again soon after. Let whatever happens happen. It felt like I was being rocked to sleep, weightless, and when I came to again... It was morning again. The others were still inside assembling for breakfast. I got some sleep, but it didn't do any good. I leaned against the railing on the back deck, just looking out into the world and wondering just where things left me. Would it have just been better if I stayed at home? I heard the back door open, followed by Sal's heavy footsteps. Good morning. Hey, Sal. He drummed his fingers against the railing as he watched me carefully, silent beyond that greeting. What's wrong? Nothing on my end, but what about you? I sighed, looking back at the trees briefly while I thought over how best to answer. I think I'm just ready to go home. So soon? That would make sense, all things considering. You're talking about what came up at dinner. He nodded slowly, looking out at the trees much in the same way I did. We're all worried for you. I'll be fine. And you're sure? Maybe. Well, okay. He pulled away from the railing before stopping short. What are you planning on doing today? Dunno. Part of me wanted to run. Part of me wanted to stick nearby just in case Oswin's body was found. Then there was his rat and his expectations that I'd figure out what happened. Well, whatever you decide to do, I can make myself available if you want the company. I whined, quickly turning to him. Why? Because we're friends. But I said something horrible to you and you didn't get to sleep. And then you had to put up with Orlando's swimming lesson and... He placed his other hand on my shoulder and flashed me a smile. Dave. It's alright. I'm sorry, Sal. I know. You didn't do it just to be mean and Dean talked it out with me, so no harm done. Oh. I eased my hand away and he nodded to me, continuing on inside. My stomach rumbled a little, figuring that it was time for breakfast. Taking one last look around, I sighed. Today would be better. Or at least I hoped so. When I walked into the dining room, I felt everyone look up. Not quite staring, but it felt as if they were. Well, mostly everyone. Orlando was intently staring into a cereal bowl as if not wanting to look at me. With so much attention on me, I shuffled along the length of the table and into the kitchen, leaving them behind. Rushing over to the kitchen sink, I grabbed a glass and grabbed some water, gulping it down while clutching my chest. It helped, a little, but it wasn't nearly as good as a hot brew that I had expected to come in here for. Bracing myself against the sink, I tried to regulate my breathing. In and out, over and over again until my heart stopped racing. I need coffee. Edging over to the machine, I got it going despite my hands shaking and trembling. The moment I started to smell brewing coffee, I started to calm down. The scent held fond memories, even if once a long time ago I hated the taste. Far too bitter and something I had to load up with sugar just to stomach. Mom flipped between letting me do my own thing, calling me her little rebel, and scolding me for not taking care of myself. Maybe something that comes with being a doctor? Dad was a little more lax, but insisted I not touch the stuff until I got old enough. Then occasionally we'd sit at home and have coffee or go to a cafe and get something more special. It burned as it went down, half scalding my tongue, but I didn't care. It made me feel better right now, and cleared my head just enough that I could think about what I needed to do next. I need fresh air. My mind thought back to the lab, the suffocating smell that was in there, and for another moment I felt ill. Remembering how well my last outing went by the time I got back, 
I figured that I'd have to at least tell the others that I was heading out. Maybe by the time I come back, I would have an idea on how best to approach the hidden room in the library. Especially given Haas and I said that we'll tell the that we'd tell the others before too long. Um, everyone. After I'd readied myself, I, I had headed into the kitchen to let the others know what was going on. The only problem was that not everyone was still here. Oh. Dean and Haas looked at one another before turning back to me. Dave, what's going on? I, uh, wanted to tell everyone that I was going to go out for a walk. Again? Yeah, I figure I need to get out of the house and just stay away from it for a bit. Get some fresh air. Dean scratched his chin. He stayed quiet but slowly nodded, seemingly understanding. Well, stay safe, I suppose. And I'm just thankful that you're at least telling someone this time. I looked between the two of them, suddenly unsure if I should be leaving. Should I go tell the others? No, it's alright, I'll let them know. Oh. Okay. Then I guess I'll be going now? Dean stepped forward and put a hand on my shoulder, flashing me a quick smile. Stay safe. Then after lingering a few moments, he turned, and round, he turned around and left. I looked to Haas, who almost seemed just as eager to go. See you when you get back. Just like that, Haas left after Dean. Maybe they were off to do something together, but who knows. Everyone else was already doing things and whatever they were, it didn't include me. I wandered out the front door and looked out at the grounds that sprawled out before the house. The long stretch of grass with the highway disappearing down a ways through the trees. I'd been down that way before. Not all the way, but maybe that was somewhere I could go. I'd slept most of the way on the bus after all. Maybe it was time I checked out what was at the end of the driveway for real. The main selling point was that if I was looking to avoid everyone for a bit, it'd be the least likely place for people to go. As I wandered down the driveway, I had my hands in my pockets and, and I had my hands in my pockets and let my mind wander. It was nice out here, peaceful. So all that was left was to find a way to resolve my feelings. I was dragging my feet as I made my way away from the house. A part of me feeling like I was ready to, like I was already saying goodbye to Orlando after hearing the bombshell he dropped yesterday. My heart ached for him in a strange way. I'd picked up along the way somewhere that he'd been keeping a secret from me, but even now I felt I only knew half of it. He'd been good to me since the day we met, and now knowing everything that was going on made me wonder just how long he'd been worrying about the end of the month. Can I really not follow? I knew the truth I knew the truth now, that Orlando was involved in organized crime as much as he didn't want to be. But separate to all of that, he was my friend. He wouldn't hurt a fly, so how did things end up being this way? Naturally, the thought circled back around to my dad, what he'd say. Would he approve that I'd stick by a friend, or would he keep me away from Orlando to keep me safe? Was it possible he even knew this whole time? Maybe that was the reason I felt so close to Orlando. He was always looking out for me, just in different ways than most people. Soon enough, I hit the main road, the mountains opening up in front of me. I had to shield my eyes from the light having been walking in the shade for most of the trek down. Wow. We were much higher up than I'd realized, with the mountains and forests rolling out as far as I could see. As I stood there, looking down at the drop-off on the other side of the road, I wondered how often people came this way. When I looked down the road, I wondered just how far away the next house was. With how it wound around the corner, it was hard to tell just how long the road was. Which, given I had all the time in the world, I wandered down it realizing that this road only led to the mansion and nothing else. Sure enough, the road continued to wind down the mountain. Across a bridge and out of sight with no other houses in view. If I wanted to go home, the road back was long. I could just continue walking down this road and never look back, and I'd be done with everything involving everyone dying. But that's just not how I worked. The thought that one of us was marked for death lingered deep in the back of my mind despite me not knowing for sure who it was. Just give up, Dave. Let whatever happens happen. Let them die. As I stood in the middle of the road, my eyes wandered over to the cliff to my right, rising high before plateauing somewhere higher up where yet more trees sat. Then over to the other side of the road where a river occasionally peered out from behind the trees a long way down. I don't know, maybe. Everything behind me back at the mansion was in its own little world, one I wanted to escape. Edging closer to the edge of the road, I wondered for a second what would happen if I were to just fall off then and there. 
I wondered what it'd be like to die, and if I'd get to see Dad again. I wondered what Mom would think, or what she'd do, or if she'd even notice. All it'd take would be to just... One step, and then another, towards the edge of the road and peering over the edge. Staring down at the trees below made me feel lightheaded and I quickly stepped away. I... I can't. Falling back on my rear, I buried my face in my hands, ashamed and embarrassed. Yet I still couldn't cry. Even facing my own death wasn't enough to set me off. Instead, I just wailed and whined into the open air. I got up and just yelled, angry, confused, upset. I didn't care. Hours passed before I started to head back up the driveway. My throat sore. Each step I took back towards the house made me think if the others had been listening. If they'd even heard it all. And if they did, if they cared. The sound of a twig snapping caused me to stop. Quickly looking around, I tried to place where the sound had come from. Who's there? There was nothing but silence as my reply. But I stood there and waited. My eyes darted about the place, expecting to see something. Anything. I was about to start walking when I heard another snap somewhere nearby. Hello? I spun around and started to back up. If this were one of my friends, they'd have answered. The next thing I did was run, as fast as my legs would carry me back to the house. I don't know how long I'd been running for, but I started to slow down further up the driveway. Listening in, I tried to figure out if I was being followed or if whatever had been in the woods was still nearby. What? What was that? I leaned up against a tree to catch my breath, occasionally looking over my shoulder. Nothing as far as I could tell. Continuing on, I got back to the manor. The moment it was inside, I picked up the pace right up until my hand was on the doorknob. I hesitated, looking over my shoulder at the trees to see if I could spot what, if anything, had been following me. Straining my eyes to see if I could see anything, I shook my head when nothing moved beyond the gentle sway of the leaves in the wind. It was unsettling and I found myself cradling my arms, wanting to be around someone else just for a little bit, or at least someone that I knew. Hello? My voice echoed in the foyer, fading into an uncomfortable silence. Hello? Anyone? Anyone here? Please? I'd done a lap of the house, peering into the bedrooms plus any other room I came across just in case something had happened or gone wrong. But sure enough, everything looked untouched from what it was supposed to look like. Which was a good thing, maybe. Part of me was fearing the worst and that had come back to find one of my friends dead. Oswin had already been killed, and while the thought didn't immediately make me want to hurl, there were no signs of pointing to who did it or why. I looked across to the door leading to the vault, wondering if there was something that I could have put in, something that would have saved Oswin's life. With it being so dark and cold, I didn't want to stay as much as the allure of the vault made me reconsider. It was warmer outside if barely, couldn't hear anyone at the pool, and a quick wander over to the greenhouse proved that no one was in there either. They were just... gone... Wherever they had disappeared to, I didn't know. What I did know was that I was scared, lonely, and, they ju and just wanted to curl up into a ball in bed. When I got to my room, I stripped down and got under the covers, willing myself to sleep. The longer I slept, the longer I didn't have to consciously think about everything going wrong. Or at least that's what I told myself. If I could stay asleep forever, maybe that'd just be better than being here in this mansion. Dave. I could hear him, clear as anything. When I opened my eyes, there he was. There he is. Dad! I knew it was a dream. I knew that he wasn't real or even there. But it was so clear and so real I wanted to believe that if I reached out I'd be able to feel him. Hey, sport, what's got you down? Huh? Nothing's... Nothing's got me down. Really? Don't buy that for a second, champ. Your nose is doing that scrunchy thing mine does. He made a show of touching his own nose before reaching out for mine. Or he would have touched, instead I flinched away. So come on, Dave. What's wrong? Dad, I... I miss you. I want you here. I don't want to be alone and everyone's dying and... I'm scared. I'm really scared that I'm not normal. Why haven't I cried, Dad? Why? Sport. Hey, now. I wanted to cry again. I really did, but instead my face just sort of scrunched up painfully instead. You're allowed to cry. You know that, right? I want to! But you can't? Why? I don't know! I could feel myself tugging at the fur on my arms. Maybe something I was doing even while asleep, it was hard to say. The faintest sound of a siren echoed somewhere in the distance, muffled as if I were hearing it from behind many walls and with headphones on. Flashes of red and blue started to stain what I was seeing, alternating between the two until it was all I could see. 
I cowered whenever I thought of that night. More so than the funeral or even anything else that happened ever. Or even everything else that happened after. That was the night that changed everything for me. When I awoke, it was late, having slept most of the day away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh... Even with the amount of sleep I'd just finished, I was still tired. Not physically from my walk, but something else. I wandered downstairs at a loss of where I should be going. About halfway down, my ears picked up someone's voice. Guys! Oh, hey, Dave. See? Told you he was fine. Well, yes, but the yelling. He wasn't dying, he was just upset. Take it from someone who howls. I know my shit. So, you were worried, or... Right up until Big Dog said not to worry. Ty went to say something before sighing and giving up. Can you maybe stop that? Well, you were calling him Top Cut before. Busted. I don't... I don't understand what happened. Where did you all go? After you left for a walk, we all went to the river. Without me? You up and left before anyone could really say anything. You decided to go on a walk long before Dean or I could stop you either. I straightened my back, shutting my eyes tight. Hmm? What's wrong, Dave? Nothing, I'm... Fine, yes, we know. But I am! Are you? Well, I'm trying to be. I'm dealing with so much that I can't talk about, that I'm not ready to talk about, and just... Just what? I want to go home. This vacation sucks. It's not that bad, is it? It is! I hate feeling this stress. I hate hiding secrets from everyone. I hate it! I repeated the phrase over and over, clutching the fur atop my head until Tyson struck me lightly across the nose, making me yelp. What's that for? You want the truth? Tyson, lay off. No, fuck this. If no one else is going to tell him how it is, and I will. You hate everything? You know the bullshit that you're putting yourself through? I'm not putting myself through it! It's all... It's just... I growled, gesturing wildly with my hands, unable to focus my frustrations at any one thing. There's the growling again. Sal looked at me carefully and I glared back. Overly sensitive in the moment, Dean, Roswell, and Orlando seemed to just be keeping their mouths shut, averting their gaze when I spun wildly to look at them. They're not going to help you, pup. Only one that can help you is yourself. What's that supposed to mean? You're going to sit your ass down and tell us what's wrong. Right now. You can't make me do anything! It's time to drink water. 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 Then shut the fuck up about your problems then. You want help, but you don't want us to help you. You said you just want to bitch about it, and we're all too nice to tell you you got fucked and grow up. Well, I knew you could be an asshole, but what the hell, man? Hoss gave Tyson a look that was promptly shoved away by him. Fuck off, Hoss. See, Dave? It's not difficult. Yeah, well, fuck off then, Tyson. Ty straightened out I could hear him breathe out through his nose. Took a step back and I wasn't sure if I was out of shock or... Shock of if he was still deciding how to react. You want me to spill all my problems and just... The words caught in my throat as everything I'd been holding back made me feel queasy and I paled. Half collapsing into Tyson and clinging onto him for support. You borrow from me again and you're dead. Made an affirmative nod before trying to get my breathing under control. A hand landing on my shoulder before going over to my back and rubbing it carefully. Maybe not all the problems, but maybe just one to start. Nodding my grip on Tyson, Tyson tightened briefly before I stumbled back into a pulled-out chair and collapsing into it. Okay, okay. Just one secret, right? I looked to the three of them for confirmation and none of them budged, as if just waiting. So I went to the library and, um... The library? Okay... What happened there? I met someone. Someone important. You met someone in the library? Who? Roswell wandered closer, curious and watching me carefully. They'd been there this whole time. Someone that someone that I should have told you about rather than waiting for you to ask. The master of the house, right? Nodding again, my eyes darted between everyone. I talked to him a few nights ago in the library and was going to talk to him again last night there too, but... But what? He's... The thought of what I'd seen the night before made me whine, clutching my head again. He was dead. Somehow, and the likely culprit was someone in this room. The silence that came after I uttered the single word to best to describe how I found him was stifling. Uncomfortable as I could imagine everyone looking at one another in a mix of confusion and worry. Gripping my chest, I let out a rattled gasp for air. 
The dim green light, the smell of decaying flesh and dust, the silence excluding the faint hum of machinery and electronics in the lab. Oswin slumped in his chair, dead, the knife out of his chest and the blood, and... The rat, Thanatos. Cradling my head in my hands, I looked to the others. I felt better in a sense. A weight had been lifted off of me and that there wasn't a secret being kept. It was so negligible, I wasn't sure if it was worth bringing up. So the master of the house is dead, as in... Well, either he died of old age, or... The implication was obvious, and the glances and glances were exchanged around the room. What do we do now? Contacting Benson seems out of the question unless someone has contact information, so we should go check the library, right? Why? Looked fine the last time I was there. Right, there's that problem too, isn't there? Sal, you've never been to the library. Yes, I have. So you found the secret passage in the conservatory? The... what? Right, well, if what Dave says is true, and given how he's reacting, I'm certain he's not lying. Now's probably the best time to show off the library. Hold on, secret passageways, a library? Why is this only coming up now? Haas asked me not to tell anyone. All eyes were on him as he sighed out. He asked me about it, how to get there, so I showed him. Okay, but why even keeping it a secret? How did you even know about it in the first place? Wouldn't... I mean, everything that's been going on, does that mean Hoth is... Okay, before anyone gets any ideas, why don't I show you this room, and then we can go from there. But isn't there a body there? Everyone's attention turned back to me, and I fidgeted in my chair. No, the, the library would be fine, but you'll understand when we get there. Well, I guess there's no point in holding you off any longer. Haas threw his hands up and walked out of the dining room, slinking out of sight, although I noticed the slump in his shoulders as he disappeared out of sight. Damn. I watched as Roswell went to follow Haas, close behind Tyson, who had decided to follow only moments sooner. Well, no point in holding things off. Yeah. A dead body. Orlando trembled and Salp. Orlando trembled and Salp put a hand on his shoulder. You'll be alright. Come on. They too wandered on, leaving Dean and I behind. I slumped in my chair, unsure if I wanted to go after the others. Quietly, Dean pulled out a chair next to me and sat down without a word. You're not going to follow the others? Well, you're so upset that you were left alone, so I didn't want to repeat that mistake. It's not your fault, Dean. Maybe, maybe not. You're having a hard enough time as it is, and I don't want to pile on that. Thanks. There were a few moments spent in silence with my eyes drifting over to the door leading into the foyer. You feel like we should be following the others? Shouldn't we be? Not if you don't want to. After what you said, I don't think anyone would blame me for wanting to stay here. But I'm just... What do you think I should do? I'm at the point of snapping at people for no reason, and I just... Dean placed a hand on my shoulder and rubbed it gently, almost as if he was afraid I'd break in his hands. We can stay here if you want. Who cares about a secret room and secret passages anyway? Really? I'm curious, sure, but I'm not about to abandon you. Abandon you about it. About it if you need someone nearby. So you only stayed because no one else did? I stayed because I care about you. At the very least, as a friend, but now wasn't the time to start talking about mushy stuff. I chuckled a little, rubbing my face half expecting to tear up from the gesture. Really? We all do, but we're just struggling. We just want to help, but we're scared that if we say or do the wrong thing, that's going to end up with us doing more harm than good. Oh, well, you know how it is. I don't, but I really would like to, Dave. What I'd give to know what's running around that head of yours so I could tell it to stop and give you a break. Again, I chuckled, both at the thought and the sly smile of Dean flashed at me for all of a second to get his point across. So, what did you want to do now? If you want to sit here and we can just have a cup of coffee, we can do that. If you want to go sit outside, we can do that too. Is it bad that I want to check on the others? Not at all. Worried about them? Worried that I put Ty on edge and that he might snap at Hoss. Well, you did snap at him, so he's probably going to be irritable for a bit. Are you planning on apologizing to him? Maybe. You kind of deserved it for getting up in my face like that, though. Then let's play by ear. He got up and dusted his hands off before offering one out to me. Coming? He took me by the hand, and together we headed upstairs in search of the others. We reached the conservatory to find it bare, but the bookcase was moved aside and the dark passage that led to the library was in full view. Dean was quiet, letting me lead as we wandered into the dark, and eventually we could hear the others talking loudly about something. The fuck is this? Sure enough, the first thing I could make out was Tyson yelling. 
with Dean and I picking up our pace to reach the others on the lower level of the room. It's a library, dumbass. I can see that. But why? A room this large? It's a wonder none of us figured out it was here, given the layout of the rest of the rooms. Is it really that odd? Maybe not. I can't say I was really all that attentive, and there are a bunch of side rooms that don't really have anything in them, making the actual floor plan harder to figure out. Okay, well, everyone listen up, because this is quite simple. Very simple. It better be. So, a few things first. I've been to the mansion before. About two years ago, something like that. Why? He cut Hoss off before he could continue, scratching his chin. When did you know that we were at the same mansion? Why were you here anyway? Did you know the owner of the house? Hoss made to grab at Ross while frustrated at being bombarded with questions. But much like when he avoided Orlando at the bus stop, Roswell slipped out of reach and hid behind the desk so he had a physical barrier between him and another attempt at being grabbed. It started as an acting gig. Some sort of small horror reality show. Mansion, hidden rooms, whole works. I had met Benson before. That's when I realized that this was the same house. Never met the owner only ben of the house, only Benson. And this room... Found it myself. Figured I'd tell the film crew, but Benson asked me not to. Wait, Benson asked and you just didn't tell anyone? There was more to it than that, but basically. So what, you filmed a TV show here once and didn't think to tell any of us? I was going to eventually half let it slip and Roswell and I were looking around. Trust me. I noticed. But other things took priority in calling you out on it. What about the other stuff? You said first there's more, so yeah. Right. That's where Dave comes in. Oh, right. I asked about the library. You showed me how to get in here, and... For a moment, I wondered if I should say the rest of what had happened in here, or leave it to Hoss. Mostly, I was just thankful I'd caught myself before I'd said anything else. And? Well, the gig didn't really pan out, so being here is just a reminder that I was so close to getting on TV, and then... Just not. But that's not all that happened here, right? What do you mean? There's something... Something Haas is leaving out, but I can't quite place it. Barely certain that was everything. If there was anything else, I'm probably, I'm possibly just forgetting. He shot me a quick look, and I nodded slowly, figuring it'd be best to keep the conversation rolling. So after Haas showed me how to get in, I went to meet the master of the house at 11 p.m. I think. Really? By yourself? I love growing heart. Your stream theta, and you guys are great. Thumbs okay. up. I love being a part of it, and it is really cool to see the stream on YouTube and see what I wrote. Okay. More importantly, how did he contact you? Uh, there was a speaker, like a radio that we talked to each other through. So you never met him in person, just on the radio? Also, thank you, Maestro. Just, I'm doing a little heart, you can't see, but I'm doing a little heart. Just on the radio? No, I meant we arranged to meet in person with the radio and then met here in person. Benson set it up. Benson really got his hands full of arranging everything, huh? Okay, so there's a hidden library in the mansion. That's fine, but you don't sound so fine about a sale. Right, I'm more interested in that. He pointed to the door and I wandered over it, placing my hand on the cold metal. I was fairly certain that I didn't close the store when I made my escape. Another vault? Here? It can't be right. Orlando roughly shoved me aside and typed something in quickly, breathing out when it beeped angrily at him. If not, then what is this? When I spoke to Oz, uh, he came through there. Oz? As in, the Wizard of Oz? Oz... Hammond? Oswin Hammond, yeah. Roswell's brow furrowed as he thought it over. Oswin Hammond is... dead. But... where's the body? Huh? Oh, it's in the lab. There's a lab? Laboratory, more like. But I haven't come across a room like that. What if it was just in a different part of the house? Yeah, it's... I braced against the metal door again, looking it over. Behind this door? When I came here last night, the door was open. I followed it down a dark corridor and... Well... You found him there. Yeah. Hugging myself, I turned my back to the door and rested against it trying to shake the memory of the event. Last night the door was open, and when you left? I looked at him uneasy. 
He picked up what I wasn't saying and looked to Roswell. Which means someone has been here since. Eyes fell on Haas again while I tried to look anywhere, but... I don't like what you're insinuating, Roswell. Yeah, you reckon Haas would have kept would have kept that from us that he also found a dead body. Wouldn't you? What? If you found a body, would you tell anyone? We've been talking about finding him dead, but he didn't die of old age, did he? Well, no, he was, um... I trailed off hoping Dean would fill in the blank. He nodded slowly, almost wincing when he spoke next. Which means, it could have been one of us. We all looked at one another quickly, trying to figure out who could have done it. But high up on the bookcase, his eye caught movement. Fuck off, you think one of us did in a guy we didn't know about? Well, we did know about him after Dave spilled the beans about him being here. Otherwise, I doubt anyone would have questioned Benson, insisting that we were the only ones here. I caught all of what Haas said, but little else. Was that the turning point? Was that the deciding factor in if Oswin died or not? But still, we then we then need to know where he was. Slip away with the others not knowing. Kill him, come back without running into anyone being any wiser as to what happened. Until now, I'd only told Dave about this place. Dave didn't do it. I'd be inclined to agree. I don't think he'd hurt a flap, or even tell us if he did. While they bickered among themselves, I locked eyes with the beady red ones staring down at me. The metal glint of his collar reflecting off what little light was in the room. Thanatos, high above us, watched quietly in the dark. He shook his head slowly at me before disappearing out of sight again. Let whatever happens happen. The sounds of everyone discussing things slowly just became white noise. Why was Oswin killed? Was it one of my friends? When I zoned back in, Orlando was holding Roswell and Haas apart while Dean nursed his nose. No one here did it, right? There was silence. Haas and Roswell fall falling still to look at me with Orlando looking relieved that the fighting had stopped. Tied a digit in his ear looking bored, so all in all, no witch hunt had really started. No one did it, then can we just go? What, and have dinner? I guess it's about that time, but I don't think I have much of an appetite anymore. If you're not lying, then not only do we have a dead body in the house, we have no idea who could have done it. Which I think is a big problem. I only care about one thing right now. And that's if Dave feels any better off loading the shit onto us. That- That's not fair! That's not what I wanted to do! Well, you did. Only because you forced it out of him, Tyson! Well, I guess we can maybe try and find a way to contact Benson? Could you try calling your parents, Rothwell, and see what they say? My parents? Isn't your dad a lawyer? And they arranged this so they'd have contact details, right? Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea. I'll give them a call and see what they say. I don't like this. What- what if we said that it was Benson and pretend that it didn't happen? Really? That's the best you could do? Well, I'm trying, Ty. I, I don't want to think of any of my friends killing anybody. And so long as this door's in the way, I can't even prove that what I saw was just my imagination. Makes it hard to narrow things down, that's for sure. I'm with Dave in that I want to leave this place now. Not the house so much, but at the very least this room so we're out of the dark. Put me down as one to be somewhere else right now. Very least, I can get some fresh air into my nose. He rubbed it gingerly, almost wincing. Seemed like he'd gotten hit again, but I couldn't place who. I don't think I've had enough sleep to go thinking about murder today, so any break from this talk suits me fine. I was hoping that it'd feel better when I showed you all the library, but I guess that's that. I'm sorry for lying, but damn. Haas scratched his head through his mane and kept his gaze averted. Tyson started to walk off first, and Haas made me follow the movement he saw Orlando and do the same. Haas made to follow the move the moment he saw Orlando and do the same. Come on, dude. Let's get you patched up. I'll be right. Just some fresh air will do me fine. It was a lucky shot, that's all. Then they left, leaving just Roswell and I at the door. But flashing me a quick smile and shrugging, Roswell followed soon after. My feet felt like lead, and I dragged them along after the others. When we got out, a few of us peeled off from the group and went to our own rooms. No None mama. of us really saying anything. Was there just now a rift of mistrust in the group because of this one thing? When I got to my room, I sighed, having only been here a short while ago and already finding myself back. I felt more tired than when I'd awoken, the only upside being that at least I knew that my friends were alive. I wasn't hungry, I felt numb, and on autopilot I got back in bed. 
Normally I'd reach for my phone and listen to my dad's voice, but the strength in my arms just wasn't there to reach out for it. I resigned myself to just cuddling one of the pillows on my bed, and sure enough, I fell asleep once again. Hang on. I'm gonna crack my back. I'm gonna try to at least. Emotional damage! I was cold. Not in a way that throwing on more clothes could fix, but something chilling at my core. When I opened my eyes, it was the crack of dawn, at least based off the light slowly filtering in from the window. That cold feeling was still clung to me, almost like a blanket I couldn't just shrug off. Was the thought of o of Oswin dead, and then my friends all being worse for wear after, sho after being shown the library? Thanatos was out too, so where was he now? watching. My throat was dry, my fur tingled, and I got up to have a shower. Not that it did much good, the water was hot and I sighed out basking in it, but the feeling lasting only while I was under the water. Collapsing back onto the bed, I thought about shooting Orlando a message, not for any other reason than to use him as a heater. When that sank in, I shied away from my phone out of shame. With a sigh, I resigned to lay on my bed staring at the ceiling. The cold transitioned into a numbness that covered my entire body. Something that felt like I was covered by something matting my fur together. Closing my eyes, I wondered where I wondered where things stood after last night. But the sudden onset of pain coursing through my head made me yelp, clutching my head. Someone had killed Oswin. That someone had known how to get to his lab, used his knife to stab him in the chest, and closed the door leading there so we couldn't even check the body after I'd found it. If I were more like Roswell, I would have considered trying to figure out who it was, but the prospect of it being one of my friends was making me sick. The worst part was that without showing them, all they had to go off was my word for it. I was only thankful that they hadn't called my sanity into question over it. The sound that came out of my mouth was feeble, tired, and elongated whine that registered as a sound of a as a sound a wounded animal would make. <laughs> Sitting upright as I heard a knock on my door, I wondered who could be at this hour. Um... Come in. Roswell peeked around the door into my room, almost as if checking I was still in bed or not. Oh. Hey. Yeah, hey, um... He entered the room and closed the door behind him, wandering over to the bed. What's wrong? Me? Oh, nothing. But I just figured I'd see how you were holding up after last night. I'm fine. Right. There was a tense silence between us. I didn't quite register what I'd said until Roswell started talking again. Well, if you're fine, I guess that's that. Sorry, I'll let you keep doing whatever it was that you were doing. Huh? I don't... Catch you at breakfast, Dave. Wait, no! Are you fine, like, as well? Not really? But it's alright. I'm not going to weigh you down with my troubles if you're barely coping with your own. I went to speak, but he held up a hand quickly and cut me off. Sorry, I should have known that this sort of stuff is maybe a bad thing to bring up first thing in the morning. But you need to talk about it. Sounds like it anyway. Roswell breathed out through his nose, eyes tracing the floor, and his voice held low. I thought I did, but maybe I don't. Sorry, I'm just gonna go. If you're fine, then I guess that's all that matters. That's all I really came here to check on anyway. Roswell, what... what's going on with everything? I guess maybe we'll find out more today. See if we can break down that door, maybe, or something else. I don't know. With Benson gone, I don't know what to do. We can't call the police? We can't confirm what you've seen. We have your word for it, but even then... Without being able to open the door, there's not really much the police could do, even if what you saw was real. You... don't believe what I saw? I believe you saw something that's worth looking into. But we can't in good faith go claiming murder when we can't, you know. He made to reach out for me, but opted not to, shying away to fiddle with his hands. But why would I lie about that? About... Dave, I don't know. You've been out of sorts lately. We don't know how to help, and maybe it's just... I knew what he was going to say... I knew what he was going to say it before he got it out of his mouth. It's not in my head. I'm not crazy. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna go. I don't think you're crazy for what it's worth, but there's only so much we can do. With that, he turned and left the room, shutting the door carefully behind him. Alone once again, I sighed out, shifting so I was comfortable on my bed again. I listened to the sound of the house, the creaking walls, and the sound of birds outside my window... More time passed and I could hear the others moving about, tiredly greeting one another. Slipping out of my room, I wandered downstairs, 
following in the wake of my friends who seemed to be heading towards the dining room for breakfast. In a daze, I wandered in and collapsed in a chair. Some of my friends sat at the table and others wandered into the kitchen. Now, they become so organized that they just did what needed to be done without needing to talk it out first. What was I meant to be doing? Thought about it and remember what Thanatos had said. That it was my job now to figure out what happened to Oswin, who killed him and why. Dave? I almost jumped, my breath catching in the surprise of Dean addressing me. Whoa. Sorry, I didn't uh, What I mean is, Dave, I just wanted to tell you something. But I can leave you alone. You might need some time to wake up first. Oh, uh, um. We just looked at each other, tired. Without coffee, my focus was fading in and out. No, it's, it's alright. What did you want to say? Dean breathed in deep, carefully placing a hand on my shoulder and giving it a gentle squeeze. Just that... I'm here for you. Huh? I'm here for you. After last night, with what we all saw, what we didn't see, just, I'm here for you. But why? Do I need a reason? The look I gave him was somewhere between hurt and confused. I didn't know how to respond, and it seemed like Dean was just as uncertain. But, I care, Dave. Maybe too much, but I care. If you need me, I'm there. He rubbed my shoulder a little more before pulling away. I'll go get the coffee going. I watched as Dean wandered towards the kitchen, leaving only a couple of us at the table. Well, he's a keeper. Better bring me a fucking coffee, too. Right, yeah. I looked across to Roswell, wondering why he hadn't come out with anything snarky towards Tyson. That's not his job, Ty. Yeah, well, after last night, I could do with a coffee. Although watching this guy smack Dean across the face was a sight to see. He nudged Roswell and got nothing in the way of a reaction. Nothing outside of a grunt and a weak smile. That's... that's why Dean was hurt last night? Yeah, he just snapped and got him in the nose and he bent down to tell him shit was going to be okay. We bent down to tell him shit was going to be okay. Is it though? Is what? Things going to be okay? Roswell sighed out, scratching his face. I don't really know about that. The idea of someone dead in this house is just... He pulled a face, almost considering how he felt about it before speaking. Well, I'm curious, but it turn but if it turns out to be true, I don't really know what we'd be expected to do. Call the cops, obviously. That makes sense, but but what? You find a dead guy, you get someone else to deal with it. The problem lies in the culprit. Unless the owner of the house died from natural cause and Benson truly has left, then it was one of us. Oh. Wait. I'm going to answer that question that Amethyst said, what the favorite movie is. Um, hmm. Um, I'm torn. There's a... Won't You Be My Neighbor, the Fred Rogers documentary, the Poughkeepsie Tapes, that mockumentary, basically any fucking Studio Ghibli movie that I've seen, which I'm, I'm still in the process of watching Kiki's Delivery Service. Uh... The Neverending Story. The Labyrinth. Yeah, that Labyrinth. Yeah, David Bowie. Um. It's about all I can think of right now. Oh, and Fight Club. The words were croaked out, my breath catching as a tightness in my chest took hold. The others started filing in from the kitchen with Dean coming by and gently setting a mug of coffee down before sitting down next to me. Sal and Orlando looked like a mess with Haas not looking much better. Orlando's hands trembled as he clutched his mug of tea, sitting up next to Sal while his eyes darted around the room. What happens now? Well, there's no chance we can just forget what happened, can we? Continue the vacation as if this was all just... He stole a glance at me before looking back at to Orlando. We don't even know he's dead. I mean, for all we know, he's just fine, right? But he wasn't. I knew that from the fact the smell was still burned into my nose, that Thanatos was watching us last night, and the door I was certain I'd left open was now closed. There was no way a rat could close a door that heavy, so it had to be one of us. One of us sitting at the table right now. 
there's not much we can do about it unless we can open the door. I'll see if I can find any way in the way of contacting Benson and see what he thinks about this. Benson? I guess he'd be coming home to an empty house after his vacation if, well, you know. I think... I was speaking before I'd realized it. My voice was quiet and I felt numb. It's probably the right thing to do. At the very least, he'd know how to open the door so we can check, right? It seems like the right thing to do. At the very least, he'd have the right to know. This is his home, and if his master is dead, then... We were all quiet, and I tuned out further by focusing on the coffee Dean had brought me. The thought of what was to happen next terrified me. If Benson wasn't around, then I'd have to accuse someone. Well, I guess I'll go searching now. You're not going to eat? I'm not hungry. Not... not right now. Roswell, would you mind giving me a hand when you're done? He rose quietly, walking away from the table in a measured pace. He looked to Roswell, who seemed just as confused as the rest of us, but gulped down what he had left and followed suit. Maybe, maybe I have to do something too to keep my mind busy. Like what? I, I don't know yet. I'll, I'll think of something. I'm also in that boat, so guess you, me, and Tyson can find something to watch. See if we can't find something to distract the three of us. Instinctively, I looked at Dean. Now the only one not accounted for. What about you, Dean? What's, what's your plan? He seemed to think it over, leaning back in his chair before looking to me. No plan, just whatever you need me for. What do you mean? Like I said before, I'm here for you. No more leaving you behind if you're lonely and wanting someone around. But if you don't want me around, that's okay too. Is it really? I looked to Tyson, who was already getting up from the table, heading towards the kitchen. Haas and Orlando were close behind. I'd rather you not push me away if you're pushing everyone else away too, but I respect you needing some spice. Dean, I'm scared that... what happened? I sighed out. Sighing out, I drank deeply from my coffee, setting it back down on the em table empty. What if it was one of us? Am I friends with the murderer, Dean? Now, hold on. Let's not jump the gun on this. Do you really think that it's one of us, or that he's even dead? I, I know he is, I just can't prove it, which means... I think I understand, but that doesn't mean I know what I should do next. Am I... Do you think I did it? He reached out to touch me and I flinched, and the moment I did, he pulled away. I don't know. Well, I don't think there's anything I can do to really convince you otherwise, is there? If he turns up dead, then... Dean, I can trust you, right? I don't have to suspect you of killing anyone, right? My voice cracked and I turned to him suddenly. I searched just for, for any trace of anything that hint that he would be hiding anything about what I knew. Of course you don't! This time, when he reached out, he followed through, cupping my cheek with his hand. It was warm, bringing some form of comfort to what I was feeling, but I quivered all the same. I'm on your side. I swear. The only thing that changed is that if you gave me reason to think you'd want to bring harm to me. He pulled his hand away carefully, running his hand down my neck to my shoulder, then down the length of my arm to take my hand. Even then, I don't have it in me to just turn on you without talking it out first. I owe that much to hear your side before making any calls. It goes for anyone, really. Really? Anyone? Well, sure. Seems like the only decent thing to do is do to not judge a stranger without hearing him out first. Although... Dean scratched the back of his head, sighing out. Didn't exactly offer that to Tassin, so guess I'm a little bit of a hypocrite when it comes to certain things. Or people. Right. Well, okay. We sat in silence for a few more moments before he broke the quiet with a question barely uttered above a whisper. Are you scared of me? My gaze dipped down and I breathed into reply. Mouth parted, ready to respond, but I just didn't know. Dean shifted uncomfortably in his seat, sighing out. Well, alright. I don't blame you for being unsure of everything given last night and all. Just, if you decide you need me, I'll be around. As he got up, he leaned forward and placed a gentle kiss on my forehead as I kept my head low. The gesture made me seize up, a gesture from something I'd nearly forgotten. I watched as Dean strolled away, hands in his pockets with a slump in his step. If I had to guess, he was upset but putting a, on a brave front. Either way, I got what I wanted, or at least what I thought I wanted. I was alone, free to conduct my investigation or to wallow in my sadness and stress over things I had no idea on how to solve. When I thought about where my sadness stemmed from, there was only really one place. We're going to leave off here tonight. Woo! 
Ah, anyways, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.